You're going to get the glare. I am getting that terrible glare. Well, you... <laughs> I don't know if there are any other lights we can add. Okay, welcome everyone to Live from the View. It's Saturday. Yes, finally. Um, I hope you're all enjoying your weekend. This is Community Arts of Bellevue's Live from the View, our uh, program we do weekly. Uh, I'm Glenn Biggs. I'm president and CEO of Community Arts of Bellevue, and I'm really excited for this show this evening. So just give you a small little snippet background about, uh, about our organization. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit located in Bellevue. There was formed to, um, to create, promote, educate, and uplift the arts and the culture of Bellevue and the West Nashville community. And when we talk about West Nashville, we're talking about all of our friends and neighbors in Fairview and Pink, Kingston Springs, Pinkston Springs. And I've not even had my glass of wine yet. And, um, but well, and um, Fairview and all the surrounding areas of, of the Bellevue community. So Live from the View is a series of, of virtual programs that we put together starting uh, when the pandemic came about. Uh, and so our first program, I think, was in April. Um, but we saw this as a moment to help still community to build uh, community uh, because there was still a need to build community more than ever during this pandemic. So I will uh, share that we also have a website if you like more information, CAOFB. I'll put that on the chat session in just a moment and uh, so you can have that. So with us this evening, we're really super, super excited um, to have a very special, incredibly uh, evening in a show planned out for you. Uh, this afternoon, we have uh, Kathleen O'Brien with us and Kathleen is coming from her kitchen in Maine uh, at the moment. And um, so just quickly, if you don't already know uh, a little bit about Kathleen is that Kathleen is a somewhat recently retired as the CEO of Timothy Performing Arts Center. Uh, and Kathleen was there for about 31 years. So she was Tennessee Performing Arts Center. Kathleen's now focusing on the creation of new musical theater productions and under the umbrella of her own company, Cat Bloon Entertainment. She has three projects in the works, all of which are in Nashville ties and importantly, socially relevant themes. She and her husband, Tim, uh, separated time between Bellevue and back and forth with Maine with her two kitties, Simon and Garfunkel. I don't know if the if the key friends are with us this evening or not, but hopefully we'll get a sneak peek with them tonight. So Kathleen, welcome to Community Arts of Bellevue and Live from the View. Thank you, Glenn, and welcome to Belgrade, Maine. I hope yeah. you all are doing very well down in Nashville. It's warm here, but a lot cooler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right now it's pretty nice in Nashville. It's about 78, I think, today. So we're we're enjoying some nice weather. Um, How's your garden coming along? The garden is great. We've started getting tomatoes and wax beans, which are the yellow beans that I grew up on here that you just steam and put a little butter and cream and salt and pepper. We've had Yum. a couple of those. We're waiting on the red peppers. Um, we had peas earlier. So it, it, it's all been lots already and more to come, especially the zucchini. We're waiting on the zucchini. Yeah. Great. Should be some. I'll send, the, I'll send all the makeup people up if you send me some veggies. That'll work. Yeah, you got it. You got it. <laughs> so I know you have an incredible menu planned out for us this evening. And it just makes me hungry thinking about what you're about to show us. And so without further ado and without wasting time, I want to get right into this. And I'm going to turn the show over to you. I'm bowing my camera out. If you need me, I'm sitting right here. Thank you. Thank, thank yeah. you so much, Glenn. And thanks all of you for joining us. This is where we come and go during the summer. Um, we still live. Twenty-five minutes from where the house was, where I grew up, and we summered here also. So we lived in Maine during the winter and summered here. And I'm two ponds over. We're on Great Pond in Belgrade, Maine, and up here. They refer to ponds, lakes as ponds. It depends on uh, how deep the water is to determine up here whether it's a pond or a lake. And so we're on Great Pond. And this is our kitchen. We've we've been here uh, in parts of the summer for the, this is our fifth year. And we've got a great summer menu for you. Uh, the beauty of it is once you try these recipes, if you do, then you can tweak them to your own preferences. They're all very forgiving. And you can, as I said, tweak them to make adjustments for those flavors and 
things that you like to have in your kitchen and on your table. So the first thing we're gonna do is any good cook would is to make a drink. So what I like to make, and I kind of made it up here um, one summer and it's become my summer drink when I'm not drinking red wine, and it is a cranberry pomegranate martini and it's very simple to make so right over here and i'm gonna I'll, I'll tell you the options that you can make i have a glass here this is a um, a piece of pottery that was made in maine and i bought this up at a, a wonderful store up in skowhegan maine which is about 25 minutes from here i've got a couple of ice cubes in it so i put in one jigger of vodka and what I'm using is blueberry vodka. So you're really going to get more than one fruit flavor here. So a jigger of vodka, then some limoncello. This is caravella. So this gives you blueberry and, and lemon going on here. A jigger of that. Smells so good already. And then this is a really cool product. No endorsements here. I'm just showing you what I like. Ocean Spray makes a diet juice drink, and they come in many, many flavors. There's only five calories in eight ounces, so that helps offset what I already put in there. This blend is cranberry pomegranate, but they have cranberry raspberry, cranberry mango, cranberry pineapple. So again, you have different ways to alter the, the tastes to suit your flavors. So I just add, I fill it up, I put in the recipes and Glenn will tell you where those are uh, on our website. So that's pretty simple. Then for just a little bit of garnish, one of the flavors I love in terms of citrus is lime. So I'm going to just squeeze a little in there, stir it up, and then if you want to get real fancy and add a little garnish to your drink, then you've got a cranberry pomegranate martini. So let's start that off with cheers. Oh, this is good. I better not take too much of that while I do this or we might not have a meal. Okay, so with that said, we're gonna move over here. And the, the three things that we're going to make are a roasted beet salad, that we'll put on greens, and rather than some of the traditional types of uh, dressings that you've had, we're gonna make a homemade pesto. Super easy, you make it in the blender. And the beauty of this pesto is you can use it for everything. So make gobs of it when you make it. So we're gonna do a roasted beet salad with pesto. Then we're gonna make a marinade for some salmon and we're actually gonna grill it outside. So we'll take you outside with us as well. And for dessert, we're going to have Maine mud pie. And when we get to that, I'll also talk to you about um, all the different variations you can make on that because it all has to do with what your favorite flavors are. But let's get started. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is make the crust for the Oreo bottom that we're going to make in for the pie. So what I do is I get a big bag of Oreos here. Now the beauty of this pie is you can use a cookie crust, like a store-bought cookie, uh, with a filling or with not, and if you do use a filling, or if the cookie does have a filling in it, don't get rid of the filling, use it all. So you can use Oreos for chocolate, you could use shortbread, you could use any kind, graham cracker, anything that you want, and we're gonna zap that. So all you do is put, this is the uh, family size, and I use two rows of these. Again, the recipes are on the website. So I'm just going to stick all these guys in, filling in all. I'm going to do two rows of these. So sorry for the sound here that we're going to make. But here we go. We'll check that. Oh, they need a little bit more. Okay, so we're gonna take that out. 
that's only half of what we're going to use. So just dump this in here, which is a big, just an old batter bowl. Stick this back in and we're going to do the next row as well. Now I have made another one ahead of time because the magic of television does offsets the need for time in the freezer. The one that I made that's already in the freezer that we're going to cut a little later, I used a brownie mix. I used a gluten-free brownie mix. I prepared it like I normally would have prepared any brownie mix and put it in a springform pan. And we're going to put this in a springform pan. But I wanted you to be able to see that you could use cookies or brownies or possibly even cake because it's going to be frozen. So we're going to zap this again. I'm going to check that. Needs a little more. We're good there. Now in the meantime, while I get ready for this, where did I put that? Ah, I am going to microwave. Um, five to six tablespoons of butter. So that's just gonna go in here. Okay, now we'll take this remaining cookie crumbs, dump them in there. I'm done with my food processor, so I'll get that out of the way. Done with those cookies. It's always great to have some extra cookies for Duncan. And to get the, the, the pan ready, I just use a springform pan. Now, if you don't have one, you can use a pie plate. Just as easy to do that. So we will, what I didn't do and need to do is to get my ice cream out so it will soften when we put this in there be a lot easier so let me do that all right little ice cream dude everything's wrapped in plastic okay and I used the soften and melt butter at thing here so now I've got my melted butter so again springform pan I like to put parchment paper in it so that it just sticks to what we're putting in there so just also a little spray this is just cooking spray that helps anchor your paper in there and when we go to cut it it's going to be hard and so again the parchment paper it protects your pan as well. So here's my butter. We're putting it in to the yummy Oreos. Just stir it up. So the nice thing about Oreos is you also, you get the butter, you get the cookie, and you also get the cream, the cream filling. You just stir it up. If you want more butter, you can do that. It's not going to be baked. It's going to be frozen. So then we just stick this in here. And then take a spoon to flatten it out. All goes down super easy. The butter really does help hold it together. And when it freezes, it, of course, as you would imagine, hardens. And you get a really nice base and really a chocolatey base. This is not on Weight Watchers. So I've got it pretty well spread around in there. You want to get it as even as you can. Just spread it around, even out the edges, and get them up close to the spring form pan. And again, you can use a pie plate. I much prefer this because it's easier to get it out later. Then what I do is I take 
just a flat bottomed glass. And these actually are glasses that came from the Phillips, uh, Dr. Phillips Performing Arts Center in Orlando, Florida. I, I was attending a conference there uh, a number of years ago and this was a little gift. So we just pat it down like this to ensure that you get it as tight as you can to form that crust. I think we're in good shape. Now, normally what I suggest doing, since this is going to be a frozen pie, is to freeze this, because this now has hot butter in it. And the best thing to do is to put warm on frozen, because we're gonna start layering this. But we don't have that time right now, so I may have trouble getting this in here, but if you freeze this first, and you have um, ice cream that is softened, you should be in good shape. I get my little, I think it's the guys over here. Yes. A little penguin ice cream scoop. So this one is mint chocolate chip. So we're going to have the Oreo chocolate crust with mint chocolate chip. Then we're going to put a chocolate mud on top. And then for this one, I got some Ghirardelli chocolate mint candies and dark chocolate that you can just make it a little bit more fun and decorative. So just scoop this out. And this is a half gallon. Again, the, the um, flavor combinations are, are endless with this. It's just what your preferences are. I've got a dear childhood friend, Ellen, and we were over at her camp last night on Snow Pond or Missolonsky. And she does something similar, um, but she bakes her brownies in thin layers and, and then also has more layering with those. I just put a bottom in here. What I'm gonna do now is the same thing I did with the, the cookie base, is to shove this guy down. You try to get it as even as you can in the pan and this, this is going to end up being a fun, any time of the year, but definitely summer, way to have ice cream in a little bit more elegant way than just a scoop of ice cream. I have a little bit more to go here. We're making this one for our neighbor um, because we're gonna end up here with two ice cream mud pies and Tim chose chocolate fairy, and Tommy next door chose chocolate mint. So we will deliver this to him later in the night. So you can see I'm spreading this around, getting all the edges up tight in the pan. It smells wonderful. And I don't know if Christy Dorch is watching, but if you are, I apologize for the chocolate mint. I know how much you don't like chocolate and mint mixed together. I consider it a food group. <laughs> she likes to have her, her separate, which is also good. Okay. Now the next thing would be to freeze this so that when you put your chocolate on top, it's adhering to something frozen rather than something softer but we don't have that kind of time. So just gonna wash my spoon and we're gonna put on this chocolate sauce. It's Mrs. Richardson's and don't use syrup, use sauce. Now, if you wanted this to be caramel, you could do that. Any kind or strawberry, you could probably even put strawberry preserves or raspberry preserves. Again, the combinations are endless. But what, the one that I used on the one that's already in the freezer, I put main mud on it. This is amazing, amazing stuff. It is a chocolate sauce, very thick and dense, made in Maine. And you can, order, you can Google main mud and find out where to buy it. Comes in a lot of different flavors, including I think um, sea salt caramel chocolate. It's all different ones. This is really good, but this is good too. 
and I think, yeah, it's gonna, it'll be fine. It, I just won't be able to make the top of it completely chocolate brown without some of the um, ice cream coming up because it's not totally frozen. You could make this early in the morning on the night you want to serve it, or even better yet, um, make it the day before because you want it to be have a chance for everything to be nice and hard then you will take it out of the freezer um, a few minutes before you want to serve it because everything will be hard and you want to give it a chance to soften a little bit. Okay, so we have all of our chocolate sauce. Oh, it smells so good. It's not even baking. It's just easy assembly of stuff. Get this to go around. Oops. I have a feeling I'm going to have chocolate all over my hands. And you can see some of the ice cream not playing nice here. Well, that's because it's not frozen. We didn't give it a chance. It's still going to be pretty because the green from the mint will come through and you just get more of a swirl. But you just also want to make sure that everybody that gets a piece gets a nice chunk of chocolate sauce with it. And so we're going to call that done in terms of spreading it. Then what you can do, again, think about different combinations of, of flavors. What I have, where did I put it? Right here. We're going to make this a little bit more elegant. I got these Ghirardelli dark mint chocolates. You can also use Andes. You could use... You could even save some of your crust, maybe do a little bit more in the Oreos and put some crumbles of, of that. So I'm just, and you can see it's got the, the mint inside. I'm just going to break them up and put them all over this yummy, yummy. Tommy, you're going to be happy, I think. I know Tim's going to be happy because I made... I've made his flavor before. We'll just get a couple more going here. One more. This is optional. You don't have to do this. Okay. So rinse the hands. Okay. Then you need to cover it. I love these plastic, they're like shower caps that you get in hotels, but they're meant to be for your kitchen. And what I do is I just like to stretch this over it. And that way you're not dealing with one time use plastic or one time use foil. So you just cover it. And now we're going to put this baby into the freezer. where it can get nice. Let me bring this out a little bit. We have a stack freezer, as you can probably tell here. There we go. So now our dessert is going. So let me just move this stuff around. It's probably a good time to have a sip. Mm, so good, so, so good. Okay, now we're gonna move over here. The next thing we're going to do is start our beet salad. So the, the way I do this is I grab, I've got a plastic cutting board that I put on this wooden one and I love this and use it a lot. But when I'm doing something with beets, it's got this absolutely gorgeous juice in it that does stain. Um, I like to use this. It also, when I'm chopping things, allows me to, um, bring it over to the stove and dump it. So if you don't have one of these, you might want to think about it. Okay, so beet time. Get our knife and beets. Now sometimes you can get these beets already cleaned, um, but I, I didn't because I wanted just to show you how simple it is. You just cut that off and 
cut the stems off. We compost, so this will go into my little countertop composty thing. And then the second one. See how easy this is? And some people do eat the beet greens. We haven't acquired that taste yet. Maybe that'll be next on the list. My sweet husband is the cameraman, so say hi to Tim. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Here's this. Here's this. And these are medium-sized beets. This one might be considered small. Um, and it doesn't take much, but I always like to cook for tomorrow, not just today, and make leftovers. So what we do next with these is each one in a piece of foil. And I like to put a little bit of olive oil on top. And then think of this like a purse. Bring up the edges, bring up the edges, and then make a little purse. And we'll do these other two. This is one of my favorite dishes, and Tim, Tim likes it as well. So we do beet salad quite often. And when we do beets, that's typically how we do it, as, as a salad. So there's this. There's this. So now we have our beets. And these should go into a 400 degree preheated oven. And depending upon the, the size of your, um, your beet, that will determine how long you cook it. So I put it in a preheated oven of 400 degrees. And then after 45 minutes, you can just prick it with a fork and see if your fork goes all the way into it and you know like a potato, it's done, then you're done. If it's not, then keep it going for 15 more minutes and check it again. If you've got different sized beets, you can obviously check the smaller ones first and then work your way through. So here are the, the three little beets that would be going into the oven. And I did two earlier today, so I'm going to just set those there. So these would just go into the oven, like I mentioned. And I'm going to do that just to get them out of the way. Looking for my glasses here. Okay. Next thing is we're going to cut these beets. You'll see how easy it is to clean them up. Here's, what, here's the gorgeous magic that happens. It's just beautiful and the juice will come out. So be careful. Um, it's, I've got a formica top and it will come up off of that, but I don't want, I don't like to get it in there. Get a bowl here, get rid of this. I'll get this out. Isn't that color just stunning? These are nice and soft, and this is going to be, uh, what did I do with my other knife? Here we go. So I'm just going to peel these and get that off of them. When you cook the beets this way, and you don't even have to cook them in foil, but I do. I, I just, ugh, run away beet. <laughs> um, just peel this off. And some people might like the, the um, skin on there. We know that a lot of nutrition is in there. So I may not, for the sake of time, get all the skin off of this. Here's the other one. Just comes right off. So much easier to do the peeling of the grape, if that's what you want. Uh, peeling of the beet, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've got wine on my mind. Um, after it's cooked. So we're going to pretend that all this is off. Isn't that gorgeous color? You don't want it on you, but it's gorgeous. So then I just slice through these. See how easy that is. Get some of this 
off of there. And just cut them into the sizes you want. I really like um, just chunks, but you could do them any way you like. And the salad that we're gonna make tonight or this afternoon is with a pesto. Um, and as I said, that's it's a recipe that you can use for so many things. Pasta, put it in soups, all different types of things. But a more traditional beet salad is made with oranges, walnuts, um, some and balsamic vinaigrette, and and goat cheese is good on it as well. Again, you can play with these flavors the way you like. Got one more beat to go here. They look so yummy. You don't want to feed yourself while you're doing this or you'll get a very pink mouth. Okay, so some nice, some really nice chunks here. So we're going to have a lot of beets for a while because this makes, this was two large beets, I would say, and we've got a nice nice bowl full here. So I'm going to just set that there. Take just a few seconds to get the pink off my counter. <laughs> Again, it will come out, but who wants to tempt it, right? And I usually try to clean up as I go. It's a little harder when you're doing a show like this, but, um, it's worth it to clean your spot as you go if you can. It gives you more room. Okay. So now, let's make the pesto that goes with that. This is super easy. It's actually called blender pesto. So what we will do here is get out our blender. And for this, which I have right here, I, you don't have to use your best olive oil, but certainly use a good one because you do want it to taste good. This recipe is very forgiving. Well, folks, looks like we're having a little bit of technical problems. Hang with us just a moment. Uh, I'm trying to contact them. Our Tim, oh, looks like Tim's back now. Just a moment. Hey, Tim. Okay, we're back. We're back. We took a short <laughs> break that we didn't know we were going to take, but um, modern technology. So we're in the middle, or just having started really making our pesto. I have um, one half of a
this is real garlic and ginger, but you can get fresh garlic and fresh ginger. But again, for the ease of today, I love these things. You can get a variety of different kinds of herbs in these tubes. And again, I do this by eye. So we're going to squirt in about one to two cloves of garlic. couple tablespoons of ginger the juice of a lime or a half a lime sometimes I use just three quarters and just get that in there and sometimes I don't put lime in there but it, it's it's good to put it in there if you do like a, a citrus flavor. So we've got, um, a, we need to put a little salt in. Just put that in there. And I like to use uh, Himalayan pink sauce or salt. Um, and normally pesto is made with pine nuts or some people use walnuts. Um, I'm going to use pistachios. I love the pistachios on there. So a couple of tablespoons. These are shelled pistachios that are in there. Set that aside. And now the beautiful basil. I love basil. Two to three cups of fresh basil. And I don't necessarily um, measure it. I eyeball it. So I'm just going to, I don't put the stems in. And I grow a lot of basil. Um, this is going to be a combination of some of mine and some that I had to get from the store since I have eaten so much basil. But I didn't this baby you want to make sure all the basil and the pistachio nuts are finely chopped up so we'll take a peek looks good I'm going to add just a little bit more olive oil. And this again is to taste. Um, some people, I might have put a little bit more basil in there than what I've told you. Okay. That looks great. This will then now go into a bowl. So we take it out of here, put it in a bowl. What's also good about pesto, and I love to do it, and I, I usually always do, is when I make a batch, I make a lot, and then I put it into ice cube trays. And then that allows me to pop them out of the trays, put them in a Ziploc bag, and then you can use them as you need them throughout the year. If, uh, you're not growing basil like in the winter or something like that. So here's the pesto. It's a beautiful color green. And again, I'm going to add just a little bit more of this olive oil. And then the next thing is to put in Parmesan. Please don't use the powdered Parmesan on anything ever. Um, it's it's not real cheese so this is store-bought already see here how much I said we put in we use let's see about a half a cup of this. So I'm going to measure that in here. 
And again, it can be forgiving. It doesn't have to be exact. And you just mush that in there. And most Italians might say, we're done. You have pesto now. But I like to take it one step further that this recipe does. Again, a little bit more here. Just get it to the consistency you want and try not to make it too runny because you can always, after, if you do freeze it, you can always add more olive oil for that particular recipe. Then the next thing is we put butter in and this is what makes the difference, I think. So what we do here, get the beet juice off the <laughs> off of this, then I'm going to use about six tablespoons of this and it's softened and in this warm weather it's nice and soft, but cube it up, cut it up. Actually you don't need to do it too much because it's so soft. This is also a nice dish to make and then put it in a pretty jar and give it as a gift. So we just mush this all in. And the butter and the olive oil and all this other stuff is so wonderful. So wonderful. Okay, so for right now, what we're going to do is just plate this. We're not ready to eat, but we will plate it. And simp this is simple. Whatever greens you like, what I'm using today is a spring mix. There's Simon of the Simon and Garfunkel. He smells some stuff. <laughs> I think he's smelling the salmon we're gonna have. Um, but for, your, for plating this, just put some greens down like that. Get a couple of beets for that. We'll clean this up because it is sort of television. <laughs> Come on, little guy. There we go. What would Martha Stewart do, right? And then just dollop it on however much you like. This is, this is strong stuff. It doesn't take much. You could also dress this with vinaigrette first if you want. Um, and you could also put some cheese on top, like uh, goat cheese or feta cheese, however you want. It does have Parmesan in it because we've used that pesto. So that's going to be what we eat later. Let's stick that over there, pesto. Okay, I just need to make a little space here and have another sip. It's really, really tasty. Next thing we're going to focus on is grilled salmon. And I, I found this, um, no, I didn't found, I, I made up this recipe probably 20 years ago, maybe. I'm um, just combining flavors that I really liked. Um, it's super easy to make. It's got balsamic vinegar in it. And therefore you don't um, have to worry about shelf life. It will, last quite a while and I grow a lot of basil and I harvest it for pesto and freeze it like in the ice cubes that I mentioned and then I harvest it for what we call casa flamingo sauce and you can keep it I put it in like a milk jug uh, a big milk jug or water jug or um, any kind of two liter bottle and just store it and be, again because it's got balsamic vinegar in it the shelf life is strong 
but this one is easy and super fun but I do have to clean this out because we're going to go back in and use the blender and a lot of the ingredients that are in the pesto work with the um, Casa Flamingo sauce so I'm not going to worry about cleaning this at least for today if you guys weren't here and I was going to be preparing this I would clean it and my trick for cleaning blenders is to just put water in it and put it back in the blender and turn it on and that gets your blades nice nice and nice clean and then use soap and water after that okay so for whatever amount you want to make Casa Flamingo sauce has three equal parts of olive oil, balsamic vinegar, and soy sauce to start with. And I use low sodium uh, soy sauce. So we'll put this in here. We will add a cup of olive oil. a cup of balsamic vinegar, a cup of soy sauce, and I probably should have taken that off. Where's my little knife? Did you find my knife, Timmy? What did I, I do? Here it is. So we can get this, because we want to pour it, not dribble it. Okay, some garlic, some ginger, and I put ginger in the pesto this time. I normally don't, but I did, so we'll see what that tastes like. That, then I'm going to go over here and get some more lime. Another on lime or any like a lemon or lime or even orange um, these are fine but if you wanted to if you're if they're hard and you're trying to get the juice out you can zap them in the microwave for like 20 seconds and see So, while we're waiting on Kathleen to join us again, <laughs> yeah, internet connections are rough in Maine sometimes, I suppose. I guess it's the pond. It's the pond effect. So, anyways, hang with us for just a moment. I'm sure Tim will get us right back on. Uh, I hope you're all having a great Saturday afternoon. I'm having mine. I've got my cheers going on. And um, so it looks like Kathleen just disconnected from the show. It'll reboot and come back on. So give us just a few minutes. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry now. I got downstairs and cook. I'd love to cook. Um, and hopefully, we'll have some more cooking installments coming down the road. Um, so we'll wait just a moment. You know, it looks like I could play some good music or something while we're waiting, doesn't it? <clears throat> um, hopefully we'll be right back on. It looks like we're going to connect. Okay, Kathleen's back. Here we go.
Now we'll get our sound turned back on. We'll have a full show again. Just a moment. Coho from Alaska. So I got it already cut. Just okay. okay. We we um sorry. I thought we keep it on there and I'll So we're still working on some sound issues. Um, I don't know if Kathleen can see me or Tim can see me, but we'll see what we can do here. Hey, it's me. So yeah. now we've lost video again. Uh, and the sound never came back on. I was going to say just pull the microphone and see if that would help. But now we've lost the video. Once we, once uh, Kathleen went out to the grill, it seems like we lost the video. I don't know if it's an internet connection or what. Okay. Maybe, it could be. Maybe we need to go inside. I had you all. I, you had, I had a video all the way out to the grill. Okay. Then we'll go back. Well. Oh, let me, okay, let, let, let me try again. There we go. Are we good? Okay. 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 Are we? Okay. So, we're so we're outside at the grill right now, and I understand we didn't have sound going on when I made the marinade. And basically, again, the recipes are on our website, which you use one cup or equal parts of 
soy sauce, I use sodium, balsamic vinegar, and olive oil. Put that in a blender. Add some garlic, some ginger, some fresh lime, and uh, some basil. And then you zap it. You marinate whatever fish or chicken. You can do whatever you want with this. It's a great marinade. Um, and then you cook it. So we've started cooking this salmon uh, just so for the sake of time. That's great. It still has the um, yep, it still has the skin on it. I'm going to spray this to keep it nice and hopefully not sticking too much. And I'm going to put it skin side down. Now salmon can be eaten at a variety of different types of um, doneness. Some people like it well done, like we do. Some people like it to move a little bit. Um, but this has been grilled already on both sides. And you can see how easy it is, I'm hoping, to remove the skin. And then you can or, or the other thing you can do, take it while it's that way, or just take it off this way, which I find easier. Take that off. And I'm going to put a little more marinade on this side, since we've removed the skin, just to give it some flavor. Turn it over. Same thing with this. See how easy that peels off if you don't want it on? It's easier to peel it off after you cook it. Marinate some more. And then flip it over. And that's all it is. You just cook it till you're till the you have the doneness that you want. So what I'm going to do now is turn this off because they are cooked. It takes longer to cook this than what we showed you because we had this pre-cooked. So then you got two gorgeous pieces of salmon here. You turn the grill off. We'll take this baby back inside. Put that up. Here we go. And there's a cat waiting for us at the door. Simon, no. Go. <laughs> <laughs> so we're back inside here, and I'm going to plate this salmon. So that's our dinner. But before we sit down to eat it all and we present everything, um, let's see what that other mud pie looks like. Going back into the freezer. And getting this one out again, we made this one earlier in the day. And it is hopefully soft enough to to, to uh, undo. Um, what I will do is go around the edge. Maybe need a thicker one there. Just to loosen it up. Yeah, it's nice and hard. Hopefully, if we, if we can't manage to cut this one, we will cut the other one. Because the presentation in a springform pan is just lovely. So again, go around the edges. This one is a brownie base with cherry chocolate chunk ice cream. Just lift this guy out. And you have a beautiful ice cream mud pie. And to serve it,
I'm not sure how hard this is going to be. I don't know how hard the ice cream is. So I'm going to wash this. This is one of my favorite knives. And then just go down and cut it. The brownie base is frozen and it's going to be a little bit difficult to, it's hard because it is frozen. And always getting the first one out is the tough. I bet if I eat the salmon, Tim will eat this. Yeah. <laughs> and then what you want to do is get under that or on top of that parchment paper, if you can. And it will release the brownie. Again, the first one's always the struggle. And hopefully we don't cut the cook. And there we go. And it's so yummy, so elegant, so good. So I'm going to now load up my plate. When you go in inside and out of the door, uh, outdoors here, trays are wonderful. So we're going to go to our front porch so you can see a little bit of our house, our little cottage here. <laughs> there went the cat. <laughs> Bright sunny day. It is a sunny day. And we're on the eastern side of the lake, so we get the gorgeous sunsets, but it does make it pretty bright. And here is dinner. So I've got a beautiful salmon, a beautiful roasted beet salad, and some yummy, some mud, yummy mud pie for dessert, and this great martini that I have a lot of work to do. So I'm not sure if you guys have any questions. If you do, um, Glenn, just let me know and we'll answer them as best we can. But to all of you, thank you for coming to Belgrade, Maine and Bon Appetit. <laughs> mm, yummy. Excellent. Oh, this is so good. So folks, if you have any questions, please post them in the chat session. I know we've got some groups that are also looking from our different websites out or for Facebooks and watch parties. So I'll try to pay attention to those as well. Um, if you're on our Community Arts of Bellevue page, I should be able to see those pretty easily. But if you have any questions, um, Kathleen, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, good. Yay. So. Uh, how long did you st let the uh, salmon soak in the marinade? Um, you can, I, I try to do it an hour, but you can use 20 minutes. I mean, and oh, then really? you baste it. If you, uh, if you don't have much time to marinate it, even if you do, baste it as you cook it. And that keeps it moist and adds more flavor. Every time you flip it over, it should be basted. Gotcha. Thank you. So, uh, Katrin says that looks absolutely amazing and enjoy. And Holly uh, Hunley asked, how long do you grill the salmon? You grill the salmon depending upon how much you want it done. Um, Tim and I both like ours very well done. And so we cook well, and it depends on the thickness of it. This would, you'd probably cook this 15 minutes, Tim, uh -huh. probably 15 minutes. And, and you can see um, it's at its thickest part, it's maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch. And you can tell as you grill it, as it starts falling apart and starts opening little crevices within the salmon itself, the more it's done. So closer to well done, you're going to see more crevices and an opening. I'm also a pesto fan, so the new the new pesto recipe uh, makes me happy. I'm always up for, and I've never, I've thought about putting butter into the pesto before. That's a new one to me. It, it makes all the difference in the world. And, and again, I use, I freeze it in ice cube trays and just stick the ice cubes 
or the pesto cubes in a Ziploc bag. And then when I'm making soup or stews or just want pesto to put on a piece of bread, let me tell you something about the salmon and pesto. Um, we accidentally found this out this year. Uh, we had leftover salmon because we always grill more than what we're going to eat. And I wanted a sandwich. So I got some really good artisan bread and I put butter on it and I grilled it. And it was, so you just grill it on a griddle. You could, uh, with butter, you probably don't want to put it on your grill, but on a griddle. And then open it up so you've got two pieces of grilled bread, grilled side up. Put pesto on one side, mayonnaise on the other side. Put a piece of salmon on it and then some slices of tomato, salt and pepper. And tell me it's not the best sandwich you've ever had. It's so good. It is so good. So that's another way to use these recipes. And we use we use pesto and this marinade in a lot of different things. So it's a good all-purpose kind of thing. Sounds delicious. I'll have to try that. Please do. Pesto to me, you know, you can use it on so many things. Put it in a salad, you can put it on uh, you, you know, put it into your pastas. So many good things to do with it. So anybody else have any good questions that you'd like to ask? Um, I'm checking our YouTube channel as well, just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Looks like we're good. Okay, well, I'm going to let you get back to enjoying your dinner. <laughs> well, uh, thank you. Well, it's an hour <laughs> later up here, so it is dinner time. <laughs> oh, it is. It's that's right. I forget about that all the time. So, uh, Kathleen, thank you. This has been a real joy, uh, and I know that uh, you put a lot of preparation into getting the show ready for us this evening, and we certainly appreciate all your hard work. We love the lovely views from Maine. We always, um, I know, uh, I know that the pandemic is made life a little different. Oh my God, look at all that. Wow. Gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would love to have come up and visited this year. Um, next year, no, It will be next year and I will certainly be there with you. To, we'll do this show together next year. How's that? Ah, that's a challenge. <laughs> we can make that happen. Yes. So with that, uh, folks, thank you so much for joining in with us and Thank you for being a part of the show. Uh, Live from the View is uh, right now we're doing programming Wednesday through Saturdays. And uh, you can check our website, which I also, oh, by the way, the link to the, the, to the recipes is on your screen. Uh, that is on our website as well. So we will continue to build those out. That will be a, kind, of a, kind of like a continuing story that we'll add to our website uh, about recipes and cooking. So, so I think that's a, because we look at that as being an art all within itself and um, it's fun. But just our regular web website is uh, caofb.org, which you see there on the screen. Uh, caofb.org. And um, feel free to go get more information, to learn about us. You can become a member if you'd like to support our organization. Uh, we'd like to do things live, but guess what? We're making the best of it and using the tools that we have and being virtual. So we're staying connected and we're still building community and it's all still happening and it's all in the name of arts. So thank you for being with us, Kathleen and Tim and kitties. Thank you for being with us this evening and for doing all this for us. And um, we look forward to talking to you all soon. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.